Russell Brand. Russell Brand. Russell Brand. Russell Brand. Four women are accusing actor and comedian Russell Brand of rape, sexual assault, and abuse. Russell Brand is in the news with Me Too allegations thanks to a report co-published by Britain's Channel 4 News, The Times, and The Sunday Times, which they say has been in the making since they started investigating him in 2019. Immediately following this, BBC dropped all programs featuring him, YouTube demonetized all of his channels, and Paramount Plus removed his stand-up comedy special. At the same time, I've been watching the public discourse about all of this unfold into seemingly two different extremes. On the one hand, you have people saying that Russell Brand is completely innocent and that he is simply a target of a mainstream media witch hunt. And on the other hand, there are people that are saying essentially, look at his slutty past. He was all over women all the time and he was basically a walking metaphor for things that were problematic in the entertainment industry at the time. <sighs> it seems like we just haven't learned enough from the last few years, either from the Me Too movement or from the correction from it. So in this video, we are going to get into what the allegations actually are and we'll identify some of the strongest points of evidence against Russell Brand, as well as some of the strongest points against the accusers. And I'll talk about why, in my opinion, anyone that is looking at this case without an agenda and with some sense of objectivity should be looking at this from all sides, especially at this early stage. It's a whole dumpster fire, let's get into it. Okay, so to begin, let's get everyone on the same page here. But first, I have to thank this video's sponsor for helping to give me the ability to take the time and effort that it does take to craft these videos. And this video is sponsored by Guardio. Guardio is a Chrome extension and mobile app that acts to combat new security threats and create a highly secure environment by protecting your browser. I only recently learned that your browser stores some of your most valuable information from messages to banking information to passwords, addresses, and more. So obviously, having a secure browser in today's day and age is super important. The premium version of Guardio protects your privacy in a number of ways. First, it secures your online browsing information. Second, it prevents you from installing malware and falling victim to scams. And third, it gives you real-time alerts when your information could be at risk. You can also protect five family members under one account so you can get the whole family secured all at once. I recently got the premium version of Guardio and found that I had all kinds of personal information data leaks. So now I am working to secure those. Honestly, it was pretty alarming to see just how insecure my information was. So I'm pretty happy to have this service right now. And if you want some peace of mind for your information security, go to guard.io slash legal bites for a free seven day trial plus 20% off of their premium plan for full protection. The link is in the description below. And thank you again to Guardio for sponsoring this video. Okay, back to Russell Brandt. You're probably familiar with Russell Brand in some capacity, but where you found out about him probably depends on how far back you go because he's been through a number of evolutions. He's been known as a TV host. We've got Father Kelly on the phone now. I don't want to get too religious. I Well, you shouldn't be a priest then. <laughs> <laughs> You, know, you, you pick the wrong job. A quirky British comedian. I don't know the code. I lack the nomenclature. I know the word nomenclature, and this in itself prohibits me from being good at fighting. <laughs> An actor playing largely roles as a loose cannon rock star. Ah, Calm down. I'm having a heart attack. You're having a heart attack, are you? Uh, oh, Jesus. Why can't everything be this simple? A political activist. There is an economic elite that this man's party is funded by, that this man is the back comes from background working in the city. Let me tell you something. There was an economic crash and a lot of money was lost. His mates in the city farted. Nigel Farage is pointing at immigrants and the disabled and holding his nose. Immigrants are not causing the economic problems and suffering we experience. And most recently, a very successful YouTuber with a focus on wellness accept what happens to you and learn to see how it can be utilized for good. The things in me that made me want to be famous in the first place, they're sort of still there, a kind of yearning. But now, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of the painful education I've received and I'm grateful to receive, when I find myself directing that yearning towards an external thing, like, oh, perhaps some people would love me, perhaps I could get some approval, perhaps I could get some pleasure, I sort of remember, oh yeah, that doesn't ever work, ever. Turn, the, turn this energy, this craving, this yearning, this longing, what does the wanting want, to true connection. And the only way to achieve this true connection is by adhering to certain principles, living in accordance with certain 
laws that are so commonly found, they may as well be referred to as universal. Compassion, kindness, service, love, surrender. From stand-up comedy to Hollywood movies, and then to his YouTube channel dissecting politics and culture, he's worn many hats, and honestly, sometimes some funny-looking ones too. And throughout this evolution, it seems like he's gone from an outspoken horn dog Lothario, who was very transparent about being joyously promiscuous. First Russell. Two. Yes. Are you thinking about something? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I was thinking about something, because as you know, I've announced it, I find Catherine very attractive. <laughs> then when she said exchange numbers, I thought things that I'd like to exchange with her. <laughs> numbers! Numbers. The fan of numbers. He likes numbers. He's not a numbers thing. And genes. He's numbers. All right, no, you can't. Genetic right. info. <laughs> data. <laughs> what is happening right yeah, now? To one who appears to be in search of a higher consciousness. You know, I have learned, I have been shown, that we in life tend to focus on the stimulant, the external thing, the person that annoys you or insults you, the person that is attractive to you, that appeals to you. But what we should be focusing on is the stimulation. What is happening to us? What is happening in the body? It's making me feel frightened. It's making me feel sad. It's making me feel angry. This most recent version of Russell Brand appears to be wiser, calmer, and more focused on being a better human. A more skeptical take on this more recent evolution would be that it's a cover made in preparation for these allegations after the Me Too movement swept up many men for their past misdeeds. There's this idea out there that he had to have known that all of this would come to a head at some point, given what he was like in the past. And so what better way to defend against them other than to pre-position yourself as a contrarian against the mainstream media and to eventually claim that the matrix is coming after you. It's an interesting thought, but I personally am not ready to go there myself. It seems to be, from my perspective at least, that his current contrarian sort of position really comes from his attempt to be a better, wiser human. And so it's an odd argument to make to say that he's sort of refocused himself on becoming a wiser, better human who sees things very independently just so that he could fend off these allegations that may or may not be on the horizon. Now, I will caveat that to say that I'm not a regular viewer of Russell Brand's channel by any stretch of the imagination. I've come across his stuff from time to time, but generally speaking, his content isn't what I personally focus on, so I don't feel comfortable with giving a more detailed characterization of his content than that. But what I will say is that from what I have seen of his content, his YouTube channels do feel like they are a very natural progression from his political activism days, which always seemed to come from a populist, humanist kind of perspective. But I say, but here's the thing that it shouldn't do, shouldn't destroy the planet, shouldn't create massive economic disparity, shouldn't ignore the needs of the people. The burden of proof is on the people with the power, not people like doing a magazine. How do you imagine the people get power? Well, I imagine there are sort of hierarchical systems that have been preserved for, through they generations. They get power by being voted in. Well, you That's say how that, they Jeremy, get it. You like can't a, even be asked to vote. It's quite a narrow, uh, quite a narrow prescriptive parameter that changes within the... Uh, the in a the, democracy, that's how it works. Well, I don't think it's working very well, Jeremy, given that the planet is being destroyed, given that there is economic disparity of a huge degree. What are you saying? There's no alternative. There's no alternative. No, I'm Just not saying system. that. I'm saying if you Brilliant. can't be asked to vote, why should we be asked to listen to your political point of view? You don't have to listen to my political point of view. View, but it's not uh, that I'm not voting out of apathy. I'm not voting out of absolute indifference and weariness and exhaustion from the lies, treachery, deceit of the political class that has been going on for generations now and which has now reached fever pitch where we have a disenfranchised, disillusioned, despondent underclass that are not being represented by that political system. So voting for it is tacit complicity with that system and that's not something I'm offering up. And I will say this idea of a cover to fend off these allegations it really does take a certain level of cunning and calculation that we can't just project onto someone unless there's some other evidence that would sort of indicate that to be the case. Okay, so what exactly are these allegations against Russell Brand? How bad are they? According to the report that was just recently published, there were four women that accused Russell Brand of rape, sexual assault, and other abusive behavior. The allegations span from 2006 to 2013, and the women were all given pseudonyms. In the documentary that accompanied the article, there were also actors that apparently were speaking on behalf of at least some of the women. Alice has told us her story, but her voice has been changed to help protect her identity. 
I will just say that before we've gotten into the specifics of the allegations, this already brings up a number of issues for the accusers. First, there's the length of time between the alleged incidents and the time that the claims are being made. As I've said many times on this channel, there are statutes of limitations in the law for a good number of reasons. For one, the longer the time that passes between the incident and the claims being made, the more likely it is that memories fade, memories shift and bend and remix with other memories, and it's more likely that other evidence, like physical evidence, disappears. And other witnesses who could corroborate the claims that are being made by the accuser could move away, disappear, or pass away altogether. And here, the timing of the allegations does give fuel to those who would tend to think that these claims are nothing more than a concerted effort by the mainstream media to take out a quote unquote dangerous independent thinker like Russell Brand. Just as an example, it's reasonable to ask, even if these women did need time between the alleged incident and when they were ready to go public with the accusations, why didn't any of this at least come out during the height of the Me Too movement, a time when the public seemed to be looking for men to fall under the weight of their sinning past? There could be good reasons behind it, but then again, maybe not. Either way, it's something that probably should be addressed at some point. And then there's the anonymity of the woman in the report. Interestingly, Rose McGowan spoke out about this on X slash Twitter the other day. If you don't know who Rose McGowan is, she's one of the main faces of the Me Too movement and was one of the accusers who spoke out to the media about Harvey Weinstein. That resulted in multiple criminal convictions for Weinstein. So when it comes to bona fides in the Me Too movement, Rose McGowan is a voice that, in my opinion at least, is certainly worth listening to. Here's what she had to say about the fact that the women were not required to come out publicly on the record. Let me start this by saying I stand with all victims. I think what's being done right now in the Russell Brand case with The Guardian and the other news outlets is part of a concerted effort to turn the public in general against anybody who comes out. And one of the reasons and ways they're doing this is a concerted effort to bend journalistic rules that have always been in place, such as having to be on the record with who you are and what your name is in order to accuse. I didn't make these rules. These are the rules. They were the rules. So there's something very strange going on when these rules are being bent in order to push a narrative. It's almost like Icarus flew too close to the sun. He's a low-lying fish and not one of the truly powerful, so he can be thrown to the wolves. I don't know if he's guilty. I don't know if he's innocent. That's not what this is about. This is about driving us further apart and mainstream media and media outlets protecting people on a higher up level from true consequence, from what they're really doing and what they're really getting away with. And the real losers in this are actual victims. I'm sorry and hurt for anybody who's been hurt, but this narrative and the way it's being done is just pushing this culture war, pushing us farther apart and pushing any gains gotten by people believing accusers to the edge. And, and this is a way to have us not be believed. This is not the way the reporting is done. You have to go on the record. It has always been that way. I didn't make it so. It didn't make me happy to have to do so. Neither did it make others happy to have to do so. But to blindly and anonymously accuse None of these high level journalistic outlets would have ever let this be published before. So I have to ask why, why now? What is the true narrative they're pushing? Now I will also say that the actor portrayal piece is another issue for the accusers because it does shield the woman and their claims from being properly evaluated by the public. If they had stepped forward and told their own stories in the documentary, people would be able to evaluate the things like body language and the way in which they go about telling their story to evaluate their claims. And sometimes people get upset at me when I say things like this because it's putting pressure on someone who ostensibly has already been through 
some of the worst trauma imaginable. But the truth is that trust in institutions to include mainstream media seems to be at an all-time low these days. And even aside from that, we can't just accept allegations as true because that's just not the world that we live in, nor should we. Sometimes it seems like certain phrases or buzzwords like listen and believe or my truth suddenly catch on and get applied to basically every situation, when in reality, they really should be properly limited to certain specific venues. As an example, listen and believe is maybe an appropriate approach for when someone who is a close friend or a family member comes up to you and opens up about a particular experience that they had. They're not necessarily opening up to you because they want you to go and slay a dragon for them. Very often they're doing it for human connection or to try to relieve some trauma or to relieve a mental load that they have at the very least. Another example, the phrase, my truth, which is a phrase that I particularly dislike because I very much believe in the existence of a truth with a capital T. But with that said, I I do recognize that it probably has good value on, for example, a therapist couch. When a person is trying to just piece together his or her life after a series of traumatic events. And that's because the purpose of therapy isn't necessarily to get to the bottom of what actually happened, but rather to give a person the tool so that they can face their past so that they can face their future in a healthy way. But these phrases are not appropriate in venues where we are inherently and necessarily searching for that truth with a capital T. And those venues include the court of law and the court of public opinion. So while there is absolutely a place for these kinds of phrases like my truth and listen and believe, the phrase that is most appropriate for claims brought to a court of law and a court of public opinion is listen and investigate. And I will say when we investigate, there is some evidence here that is potentially damaging to Russell Brand. And by the way, when I say evidence, I'm talking about all facts that are put forward either with physical evidence or communications that have been memorialized like text messages and testimonial evidence. When we talk about evidence in law, people sometimes forget that a witness testifying on the witness stand is giving evidence with their testimony. That's why we have rules as to what a witness can testify about in a court of law, and it's why in any case, usually there are some amount of motions in limine that are filed ahead of time to enforce many of those rules. Evidence is not limited to video recordings and DNA and gunshot wounds. He said, she said evidence, is still evidence. Yes, it is very difficult to prove a case solely on uncorroborated testimonial evidence, but that's also why we put those witnesses through direct and cross-examination so that their testimony can actually be tested. And if you disbelieve someone's testimony, what they had to say doesn't suddenly become non-evidence just because you don't believe it. All that means is that it's evidence that you've determined to not be credible, which is of course well within your rights as somebody who is evaluating any sort of claims. And really that's another issue with taking these kinds of claims to the court of public opinion. Here we have a series of allegations and a lot of shade being thrown at Russell Brand. This report effectively serves as a direct examination of these women. And if you've ever watched a trial with me on this channel, you know that very often a witness can start out looking very rosy on direct examination only to be completely dismantled on cross-examination. And for his part, Russell Brand did say in his statement on the issue that he has evidence that completely contradicts these allegations. Also, it's worth mentioning that there are witnesses whose evidence directly contradicts the narratives that these two mainstream media outlets are trying to construct, apparently in what seems to me to be a coordinated attack. As I always say, cross-examination is where the rubber meets the road. By the end of cross-examination, either the witness has been confirmed and their account is still standing in the eyes of the jury, or the jury has been given a very, very different image of what the truth actually is. So it will be really interesting to see what things look like when Russell Brand decides to put his evidence forward if he chooses to do so. Okay, so I am sorry that I'm going on a little bit of a rant here, but these, in my opinion, are important points to cover when we're talking about what we stand for as a society and how we want to go about adjudicating these kinds of controversies. And in my opinion, although I understand that there are many reasons why an alleged victim would not want to go to the police and that those reasons don't necessarily have anything to do with the truth or falsity of the allegations, the court of public opinion simply is not well equipped to properly handle these kinds of controversies without being somehow accompanied by 
a trial or some sort of litigation where there are rules on how to get to the bottom of the truth with a capital T. One example of this is how Russell Brand has been dropped by many of his income sources seemingly overnight on the face of allegations that truthfully as of yet are unproven. If you believe in due process, this really should be a problem for you, regardless of how convincing you think that these allegations are. Okay, so those are the issues that I see with respect to the accusers. What about the evidence against Russell Brand? Being candid, there are some points that are troubling for him. Although most of these women seem to just have their word as to what happened, one of the women who was given the pseudonym Nadia says that she went to a rape center the day after she says that he raped her and got a rape kit done. That's timely physical evidence that would corroborate a claim. There also are text messages between the two of them that followed where he apologized for being selfish. And she says it was a huge problem that he refused to respect her wish to use a con. This is more corroboration. Although there are some people out there that are saying that this doesn't qualify as rape because she consented to the general idea of having sex with him, but that she just wanted him to use a condom and that he refused and moved in on her anyway. That's reprehensible, but not rape, they say. Now, this incident allegedly occurred in Los Angeles, so California law applies here. And California Penal Code Section 243.4 defines sexual battery as any unwanted touching of an intimate part of another person for the purpose of sexual arousal, gratification, or abuse. As courts have analyzed these kinds of cases, removing a protective barrier like a either through quote-unquote stealthing or by going against the express wishes of the other person is considered an unwanted touching. And it's one that puts the other person at risk of an unwanted pregnancy or STIs. So under California law, yes, this is rape. So here we have an allegation of rape as it's defined under California law, and it does appear to be backed up by some corroboration of text messages, a rape kit, and therapy notes from not long afterwards. This is damaging to Russell Brand. But is it definitive? No, of course not. Many have pointed out that the image of the text messages looks a little wonky as if it's been photoshopped. That could just be an anomaly or it could be an indication of fake evidence. Whichever one that is would be determined by an evaluation of metadata, among other things. Also, we know that the rape kit exists or existed, but we don't know the results of the rape kit. But these are all speculations on what has been presented to the public. We simply don't know how well this all holds up until they've been tested. And another thing that is important to note about these kinds of crimes is that by their nature, they tend to happen in private spaces. They tend to occur where there aren't other witnesses, when there isn't surveillance video footage, or much, if any, circumstantial evidence to corroborate the claims. And it's often the case that victims don't want to come forward contemporaneously because their brains have been completely fried by the trauma of the incident, and they often don't feel like they're able to even talk about it until they've sort of unscrambled those pieces so that they can think clearly again. Sometimes that takes months and sometimes it takes years. This is honestly completely understandable. And for real victims, this all adds up to a very scary and isolated place to be. And so as a result, these cases are tricky. And I honestly don't know what the answer is to make these cases easier to evaluate properly. But it seems like one of the things that should be done is to get to a place so that women feel encouraged to speak up sooner rather than later and to document their cases and to assert themselves to advocate on their own behalf. And look, I get that that is a lot to ask someone who has just been through some of the worst trauma imaginable. But just because something is hard doesn't mean that we should not encourage it for fear of pushing someone too hard. At the end of the day, if we care about people who have actually been victimized in these ways, actually getting restitution and justice, we should be caring about these things that could help make them prove their case more easily. And the truth is controversies like this one make it so much harder to give that message to women. That's because the message that the media is likely to push from this is, see, 
Women are worse off than ever. Victims can't come forward with their allegations. They'll just be torn to shreds. It's the same message that was pushed by some parts of the mainstream media using Amber Heard as an example of women not being believed. Their problem then, though, was the fact that we were actually able to evaluate her evidence. And it was through that evaluation that we were able to decide that she was completely full of shit and that her behavior was totally offensive to real survivors everywhere. But for the people that were unfamiliar with the case, the ones that didn't actually watch the trial, there was a dangerous message being pushed by the media. And it was, they'll treat you just like they're treating Amber Heard. I pushed back on it then, and I will continue pushing back on that until I'm blue in the face. But anyway, turning back to this case, if we were to assume that these allegations are real and they are true, this report, in my opinion, does not set these women up for success, nor are they setting up any victims of rape or sexual assault for success either. And in the end, it's really just polarizing people into one camp or another. For my part, I am willing to believe that these women might be telling the truth, but I'm also willing to believe that Russell Brand might be a victim of false accusations. Given his past promiscuity, it's true that he is an easy target for these kinds of allegations. We have to be mindful of that while at the same time being mindful of the possibility that someone could use that fact as a shield against critical thinking. But anyway, I'll continue watching to see what develops here. Russell Brand does have the ability to file defamation lawsuits against the news outlets, as well as the women who are quoted in the report. At the same time, we also have to be mindful of the fact that there are reasons why he might not want to file a defamation lawsuit, even if these allegations are fake. But on the other hand, he also has the ability to put his own evidence to the public to state his side of the case in the court of public opinion. As I mentioned before, he did say that he has evidence to disprove all of these allegations. So hopefully as this case develops, there will be more clarity and we can actually get to the truth with a capital T. But those are my thoughts. <laughs> what do you think? Have you concluded one way or another here? Do you think that I've gone down the wrong route here? Tell me why I'm wrong in the comments down below. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this or at least found it interesting or informative. And if you did, I would love it if you could hit the like button. It does help us with the YouTube algorithm gods. And if you're new here and you haven't done so already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can find out when the next video is uploaded. See you in the next one.